Good day everyone, we are the reporter of Lesson 20 which is Designing Learning Portfolios. Objectives of the day, at the end of the lesson, the students should be able to create a learning portfolio in mathematics. What is this portfolio assessment? Portfolio assessment is an example of authentic and non-traditional assessment of learning. The use of performance assessment is the answer to the need of continuous assessment in a course of day-to-day -day instruction that traditional assessment like standardized testing cannot address. The portfolio assessment can measure a variety of scales that is not measurable by single testing of traditional assessment. The portfolio can be in written, oral, and graphic set and developed by the learners themselves. These outputs have strong degree of quality that cannot be measured by traditional test. Portfolio develop awareness of this own learning. Knowing the criteria of content and assessment, the learner can always refer to this in each stage to verify the progress in achieving the set of objectives and goals. Furthermore, it also aims to develop independent and active learning. Portfolio assessment can address the heterogeneous groupings of the learners because part of the objectives is to exhibit the unique and personal effort, development, and growth of each learners. This flexibility is also a way to provide opportunities to demonstrate their abilities in a personal preferential manner. Implicitly, Engaging in learning portfolio promotes social interaction between the learner and the teacher and the learner and the other learners. An additional interaction is between the learner, the teacher, and the parent during the output presentation and feedbacking where the collaborative comments of the parent and teacher are impor important for future performances. That is why we have our card day or our recognition day for us to be aware of what our child is doing or how is our child achieving or progressing in his study. The, co the collaborative approach of portfolio assessment is an important element of the process. Since a learning portfolio is anchored in the theory of self-determination according to DC and Ryan 2004, students have the liberty to design it according to their preferences. This results to higher students' engagement to the test which in turn improves learning, motivation, and achievement. Learning portfolio is already anchored in every student's for them to be self, um, self-motivated, for them to, to be determined in improving their learning. They were going to be motivated to improve and to achieve more things in their studies. Active engagement to exhibit thesis of evidence. Evidence growth can enhance an individual's sense of independence, competence, and self-empowerment. The basic psychological needs if satisfied together can improve the learner's motivation achievement and future self options so learning portfolios can enhance an individual's sense of independence competence and self-empowerment since students this time were able to provide their own effort for them to achieve the things that the teacher is asking for them to do so that is one of the or serve us the advantages of making a portfolio since students that way can learn and also can be motivated to achieve more things in his or her studies. So the next is the purposes of learning portfolio. Number one, portfolio guides the learner and the teachers to set and establish goals aligned in the learning objectives. So since portfolio enable collecting information from um, different sources such as students, parents, friends, teachers, and himself, it provides teachers um, to have reliable information about the students. So they are important tools for assessment of students' learning products and process. Number two is that the process of por portfolio ensures the active participation of a learner and helps the learner to examine his or her growth and development over time. 
So since portfolio can encourage students to take more ownership and responsibility over the learning process, portfolios can be a way for students to critique and evaluate their own work and academic prog progress. Next is that the portfolio process provides chances for self-evaluation and reflection. Through a portfolio, students reflect back on the thoughts, feelings, and insights that they develop over the course of their degree program. And this creates a more holistic educational experience than many other types of assignment. And then, next is portfolio enhances the student's learning and current achievement and showcases and documents the development and growth in more contextualized approach. So portfolio enables students to reflect their real performance to show their weak and strong domain and to observe students' progress during the learning process and encourages students to take responsibilities for their own learning. That is why portfolio enhances the students' learning and current achievement and showcases and documents the development and growth in more contextualized approach. Next is that portfolio can evaluate teaching effectiveness. So portfolio provides flexibility in curriculum and instruction planning. So uh, because it highly considers the developmental domains of the learners and the contents of the subject matter. Next is portfolio can help evaluate and improve the curriculum. So, portfolio enables faculty to assess a set of complex tasks, including interdisciplinary learning and capabilities, with examples of different types of student work. So, portfolio also helps faculty identify curriculum gaps, a lack of alignment with outcomes. Next, portfolio reinforces hands-on and concrete experiences. So, because a uh, portfolio encourages students to think outside of the proverbial box. Last would be portfolio can motivate parents and other stakeholders to become involved in the learner's evaluation plan. So, um, portfolios can improve communication between the um, teachers and parents. Portfolios can also help parents become more informed about the education and learning progress of their children, uh, just like what is being thought in a particular course and what students are doing and learning in the classroom. So that would be all for the purposes of learning portfolio. Types of learning portfolio. So we have six. Firstly is documentary portfolio. Second is process portfolio. Third is Showcase Portfolio. Fourth is Evaluation Portfolio. Fifth is Class Portfolio. Then lastly is Ideal Portfolio. So firstly, we will discuss what is Documentary Portfolio. So this involves a collection of work over time showing the growth and improvement reflecting the student's learning and identified outcomes. It is also called Growth Portfolio. The collection and exhibit of items can be based on specific educational goals or experiences of particular the learning area. In other words, documentary portfolio is to highlight the development and improvement of student learning during a period of time. It often contains a range of artifacts from brainstorm list to rough drafts to finished products. So, let us proceed to the second type of portfolio, which is the process portfolio. These demonstrate all facets or paces of the learning process. Hence, the arrangement is based on the learner's stages of metacognitive processing. This portfolio contains reflective journals, think logs, and other related pieces of evidence. Moreover, a process portfolio is a purposeful collection of student work that documents students' growth from novice, when we say novice, beginner, or a basic growth of student to master growth of student. 
moving on to the third types of portfolio which is the showcase portfolio so this is the kind of portfolio that shows only the best of the students output and products in other words a showcase portfolio contains products that show how skilled someone or how skilled does the student is at a certain point in showcase portfolio this is where the students best works are presented and also they are challenged by their creativity aside from that a showcase portfolio is also called presentation formal professional or career portfolio this is a written after learning takes place and may involve students choice next type of portfolio is evaluation portfolio so this includes some work that was previously been submitted so what does it really mean about evaluation portfolio so it is the evaluation of prior learning through the development and faculty evaluation of a student prepared portfolio a technique by which students achievement of course objectives can be measured the portfolio is the tangible end product of the student's examination of his or her Moving on to the six types of portfolio, which is the class portfolio. So this contains a student grade and evaluative assessment of the student by the teacher. So what does it mean about class portfolio? So this class portfolio takes a variety of formats. They can be a class-based, project-based, or unique to the student. These individual collections of work help students document their learning and reflect on to the progress over time, facilitate effective assessment for teachers, and or create a final showcase of their strongest work. Okay, moving on to the last learning portfolio, which is the ideal portfolio. So this contains all the work a student has completed. In deciding the type of portfolio, the teacher needs to consider the level of course, the age of the student, and the portfolio that will be used and evaluated. So here are the central characteristics of portfolio assessment. First, portfolio is an assessment that is done together by the learners and the teachers. So the teacher guides the learner from planning, execution, and evaluation of the contents of the learning portfolios. Hence, the interaction and discourse are important elements of the process. Together, they formulate the objectives that are based on the learning standards. The teacher shall assist the learner in choosing the contents or items to be included in the portfolio based on the objectives but the learners has the final say on the selection because the portfolio is supposed to representing the unique and personal preferences of the learner second the portfolio should be an opportunity to exhibit the sample of work or output that show the student's growth, development, and achievements over time. In the purpose that the learner can reflect or do self-assessment of his or her own work to identify the strengths or weaknesses so that the weaknesses can become improvement goals. Third, the criteria for selecting and assessing the portfolios, especially the contents, must be clear both to the teacher and students at the outset of the process. The set of agreed criteria can be referred to by the learner in each step of the process to avoid inclusion of unessential components and to avoid resorting to what is only available at the time. Necessary planning in each step of the process of portfolio development can also be done especially by the learners.